be body, be body, be body, be body, be body. All five are be bodies. Might be rare, but it's not rare in my shop. Check out the 68 Coronet that came into the shop this week. Mike bought the car at auction recently, but it has a broken engine under the hood, so the first place it came was to Nick's garage. And look what we've got in this week. 1968 Dodge Coronet RT, equipped with a 440, four speed, down at 60. So here it is, 68 Coronet with a 440 Magnum. It should be an 18 spline four speed with the console right over here. All original stuff and equipped with a down at 60. There it is, that's the way it comes from the factory. 440, four speed with a Dana 60. That's the package you get on a 68 Coronet with a 440 Magnum. These are all desirable pieces. A lot of these cars, I believe, were made with automatic transmissions. But Mike, what he's got here is a four speed car. I believe it's uh, original paint and also the original motor. So we don't know yet. We're gonna pull it out and find out if this engine is really original to the car or not. He brought it here because uh, he just bought the car and uh, he told me that he took out the spark plugs and he found cylinder number one all bashed up on the spark plug. Come and see this. Take a look. I don't know what's in that cylinder. So right now we're gonna start taking it apart and see what's going on. Apparently, it's supposed to be a matching number motor to this car. I know it's a 67 casting for a 68 car. So what we're gonna do right now, like and I, we're gonna start removing the engine Take off the cylinder head to see what went wrong. Well, I don't know, from what I think, maybe it was start parked for a long time, storage. Maybe a valve was stuck open, cranked it over, tried to start it. The valve hit the piston, could have dropped in, smashed the cylinder. Because when Vasily drained the oil from the oil pan, a lot of antifreeze came out of it. So we know there's heavy damage in there. So we're just about to get started, take it out, put on an engine stand and take it apart and let's see what we've got. So Mike, stay tuned. Let's take it out. Yo, 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 yo. Mike uh, brought this car in uh, last year. He wanted us to build him a 440 Monster. And now he brought in a second car, which is this 68 Coronet. And uh, he wants us to take a look at it because it's a damaged motor. And then he tells him, Nick, if he needs an overhauling, the best part, he wants me to build it exactly like that Demon 440 built for my Kawaski car. He's looking for roughly 400 horsepower, stock looking, with the cast iron intake, cast iron exhaust manifold, and he wants exact same copy. So that is exactly what we're gonna do for him. 
The only thing is, he doesn't want these valve covers in. He wants the original valve covers like I have done for my car. Here we go, let's crack that loose. Nick is curious to see if the engine is numbers matching to the car. But as he watches the 440 coming out of the engine bay, he's already starting to suspect that it's been tampered with. I see a new oil pump here, and I see a new water pump. And I'm curious to see if this engine is matching number. Because from what I see, I see it blue underneath, aqua blue. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's drain the antifreeze now. Okay, perfect. I see we got an 18 spline transmission here. That's for sure, look at that. Here it is. When you got a 440 six pack or a Hemi or 440 Magnum four barrel, this is an 18 spline, heavy duty transmission. There it is. So we know he's got a good tranny. Okay, that's it. Now get the plugs, 916s, and drain the plug. Okay, let's see what year this block is. It's a 68 car, it should be a 67 block. Here we go. Here it is, 67. The block is a 67. The car is 68, it could be matching numbers. The only thing is, let's find the serial number. Okay, go ahead, Vasily, take it off. Look at that, eh? All rusted, all rusty. With the clutch out of the way, Nick can get a look at the numbers stamped into the block. And the good news is they match those on the dashboard. I hope Mike didn't damage the block because what we've got here is a matching number 68 Coronet four speed, rare, and rare to be a matching number on a four speed car. So I can't wait to remove the cylinder head and see what we've got under there. Wow. There it is. It's all there. Yes, it is. It's right here. Okay, we're just about to take apart the uh, 440 here from Mike. As we can see, oh, we all know now it's a matching motor to the 68 Coronet. So we got some damage in this cylinder here, number two. So now Vasily and Lava are gonna take it apart and see what we've got in there. And Mike told me, get rid of these valve covers. You don't want them. You want the original valve covers on this car. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Even the oil pressure switch, it's bent. Look at that. And folks, here we have it. Matching motor right over there. Here it is. This is where they stamped the number on the 68 model year car. Right over there. Don't you love this car? 68 Coronet, four speed, Dana 60. Look at that, that's rare, eh? A four speed car has the original motor still. Look at that, long bolt. That's too short. Makes a few turns and it tightens. We're gonna have to replace that, that's for sure. What do you think happened in there, Vess? Ah, maybe, who knows, we'll see. It was, I don't know if he's driving it or what, but uh, maybe all revved it or maybe something has something wrong. I see someone's been into the center lately. Look at that, it's got a new gasket. I don't know, some work's been done on it. So soon the head should be a 906 casting. Oh, what do we got here? Ooh, that's part of a lifter. 
Wow. Looks like a valve filter fell apart. Wow. Wow. Hmm. I don't know what happened. Something, uh, something came out of place. The lifter broke, got stuck up there. Who knows? Well, you know what? Let's take off the intake manifold, we'll find out. Wow. There's definitely something wrong here, that's for sure. I guess the original heads, 906 castings, that's a Magnum 440. Somebody's been working on this lately. I can see the, uh, maybe uh, they put an exhaust manifold, just have headers on it before, I don't know. But somebody's been playing with this lately, so our job is to uh, figure out what went wrong. But it looks, a lot of things look original. I don't know, somebody's played with this motor before, I don't know, but you know what? We're gonna go into it and find out. We're doing some detective work here. Who knows what happened? Looks like the valve was not stuck. As you can see, they're both closed. So there was a valve train problem from what I see. And you guys don't stand above here just in case uh, it lets go. Don't stand, uh, don't stand above this, be careful. In case there's no cylinder head on the, I mean, if there's no cylinder head on the valve, it's gonna come flying out, be careful. I doubt it, but don't take any chances. In 1968, you could buy your Coronet and choose between trim levels like Bass, Deluxe, Coronet 500, and Coronet RT. This 440 cubic inch RB V8 was only available in the RT. Man, what happened to this thing? What happened to it? Uh, Take a screwdriver, break the gasket off, basically. Somebody put a header gasket with an exhaust manifold. You know what they're saying now, eh? Why don't you use power tools? Yeah, yeah we do, but you know what? A little muscle won't hurt. It's okay. My workout. It's your workout, eh? You don't need to go to the gym. Ah, what's that? Break your bar, break your bar. Grab the intake. Easy now, easy, 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 easy. Hold on, break it on your side. That's it, take your time. I don't know why they stuck it, don't need to stick it. Okay, give me that now. Let's see what the problem is, hold on. Okay, just put it on the table right there. Yeah, somebody's been into this motor before, but this is not factory when you got silicone on the ports. As a matter of fact, the gasket itself, yes, it does the job by itself, you don't need this. And then when you have an aluminum intake, you got a paper gasket that goes over the uh, valley pan gasket. So someone's been into this motor before. For what reason, I don't know, but we're gonna find out. Okay, let's see what we got under there. Wow, my God, man, I never stick them all like that. Here, take it out there, uh, Oliver, please. Wow, it looks like a lifter let loose. A lifter broke down. As they open the engine, it starts to give up its secrets. You gotta be kidding. A lifter broke down and uh, did all this damage? Jesus, Murphy. Wow. Look at that. Let go. See? See this part that came off before that we found with the first one? That's right here. <laughs> Looks like that lifter let go. Here's a lock to it, right here. See, that's, that's what keeps the lifter together, the little lock, right here. There you go. Here, proceeding, try the magnet. We got it out. Here's the body of the lifter. Genuine Chrysler lifter. You can see the lobe is worn out. Look at that, that cam is finished, you know why? They didn't use zinc in this oil. Yeah. Look, oh, see yeah. it? Oh, see how it's finished? Yeah. This motor wasn't using zinc in their oil. Look at that. Look at that. See the wear? You see the pattern? It's worn out. When you don't have any zinc in this oil, this is what you got. Premature wear. But then again, it's an original lifter, so I ran for a long time like this. And uh, from what I see, it looks like the lifter let go. Push watt popped out of place. 
and Samuel maybe stuck the valve open, this thing came up and smashed it. So let's remove the cylinder head, see what we got. After the auction, Mike started up his car and it ran rough for about 20 minutes and then died. He pulled the spark plugs and found damage on cylinder number two. Now Nick's about to find out just what went wrong. Oh my god, there's what? a bolt in there. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding hey, me. Didn't touch oh, there it is. Oh my God. Mike, you broke the piston. Oh my God. So did we damage the cylinder head? Or did we damage the cylinder? Let's see what we got here. Here. Okay, the cylinder head is damaged. This is what the, uh, this is how the antifreeze came into the oil. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, this is good news. Someone has removed these cylinder heads before. You see this gasket? It's not genuine from Chrysler. There's a hole in the chamber. That explains the antifreeze in the uh, motor oil. And second of all, we got no damage on the cylinder from what I see, hopefully. So that means we can save the original motor. Look at that. Jesus. I got to save this for Mike. Mike, look what you got here. Look, it's stuck there. Oh, my God. He was right. It ran for 20 minutes, it ran rough, and my God, look at that. The lifter didn't let go. Something damaged the lifter. From what we see, human error. This is what the thing is. This is human error. Look at the piston, it's all broken. Where does this bolt come from? I have no idea. It's a 3 8 bolt. I have no idea where it comes from. Don't forget, this is an old car. Somebody's tampered with this before. Who knows? But that bolt doesn't belong there, that's for sure. Wow, this is something, eh? How did a bolt get there, man? It had went through the intake. It probably, yeah, maybe they, somebody left it. Uh, or somebody forget a bolt in the cylinder. That's why I say when you work on an engine, when the intake is on and there's no carburetor, always cover it. How the hell did I go in there? Nobody knows. Through the valve? Yeah. <laughs> through the valve, man. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, and I thought he dropped the valve or something because maybe the, the car was parked for a long time, the valve was stuck open, the guy cranked it over, the piston came up, valve stuck open, smashed it, dropped the valve, put a hole in the cylinder. But in this case, it's not. It's something that's uh, pretty stupid because we found a bolt loose inside the chamber and went into the piston, and of course it cracked the head, and uh, there it is, there's the results. So now we're gonna take off this side and see if we have any more surprises. Curtain number two. I want to make sure it's a standard board or is it oversized? Oh, what do we got? No, 4.320, standard board. We're pretty good. So we can build this engine with new pieces at 30 over. Here we go. 4.320 is a standard board for 440. What do we got here? 4.322, so we're good. We've got a standard board, we're good. Okay, so we can go oversized. We got no damage block and we got a standard board. So Mike, we got a good start right here to build a new Kawasaki 440 Demon engine.
So what is wrong? The motor does not turn over? It yeah. seized? Yeah. Okay, you know what? Take off the pan, drop it before you turn the engine over, okay? Drop the pan. Let's see why it doesn't want to turn. Did he spawn a bearing also? Oh, we'll find out. Okay, here we go. Why, watch, your, watch your fingers, watch your fingers. Wow. Okay, you know what you do? Try to get one watt at a time out. Like these two are easy. Get them out of the way. Then we got less to turn. And then we'll take it from there. What's seized? I don't know. Is it the main bearings? Is it a rod bearing? We don't know. I don't think it's a rod bearing because none of them are black. So, we'll take it one by one. Look at that, all the full 40s come in my shop. God, there's a lot of full 40s here. This is the first time I see a 68 car matching motor. Oh yeah? Yeah. Go for it, man. Watch it, watch yourself. Got it. Put the cap back on right away, okay? Look at all that sludge. Remember, uh, we go back a few videos. I told you that uh, why I drew my pistons, look. The factory did it, why don't I? The factory did it, there's a reason. So there's a purpose why I drill out my pistons. Press fit, pin on the rod, and of course, drilled to lubricate the pins. Seven of the 440's pistons come out of the old block without too much of a fight. But the last one, the one with the mystery bolt embedded in its face, isn't making things easy on the guys. So it's time for the big guns. Spare parts. That piston sure took a beating, eh? Look at that. Look at that. That's, that's the bolt broke that. The bolt broke that. You see, it wasn't corrosion. He was right. Mike said the motor ran for 20 minutes before it jammed. It's an intake bolt. What is it? I have no idea where this bolt came from. I have no yeah, idea. Like, it's I don't know. The, like Somebody. Because so, it's not the wing nut from the air cooler. No, no. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Could have been sabotage. I don't know. Look at that. Is that like a tool out in the operating room? They leave a tool inside? And it is a matching motor. And I believe the Tarani is, and so is the Dana. So what we've got here is a 68 Coronet with original paint, original drivetrain, with a blown engine, but then we're gonna fix it. With seven original pistons. Seven original pistons, but they're all gonna go for scrap. We're gonna build it, and you know he wants it built exactly the way I built the 440 I built for my Kowalski. The Demon 440 test mule, he wants the same thing. Put some eagle rods, beat it, ported heads, cast iron heads, cast iron intake, exhaust mouthfuls, cast iron, and of course the original air cleaner, and drive it. Mike is going to enjoy driving his Coronet someday soon. That's the magic that Nick holds in his hands. Even when a muscle car has been shot through the heart by a class 5 bolt, it can roll down the road again with the help of a place like Nick's garage. There it is, another week and it's again mail time. Okay, sometimes when we open up packages it takes a couple of weeks to put them on the, uh, our YouTube channel. But you have to have patience, give us some time, and we put every flag or every gift or every box that comes in here, we film it and as they come in. This is one of my buddies who uh, watches us on YouTube. His name is Peter. He's the one who lends us the uh, scissor lift to put up all the flags. And then the other day he brought in his flag because originally he's from Switzerland. And here it is. And Peter, thank you very much. And thank you for the scissor lift, Pete. Then we had another one uh, locally in town. The lady's name is uh, Nadia, 
her husband brings a few projects that we've done for him and she's from the Ukraine and I uh, went to see them last week we uh, went to see some of their cars and of course when we went to their place they gave me the flag this is from Nadia Nadia thank you very much we got a lot of packages that came in this past week so here we are we're gonna start opening up the packages and let's see what we've got this is from Rick from Vermont USA yeah I've been to Vermont a few times and of course every flag comes with a letter right Hello, Nick. It closes a flag from the Vermont. Oh, I didn't know. I thought, I thought the flag of Vermont was green. Thank you, Rick. Oh, that's true. The license plates are green. Joe Lucas from Wellington, Delaware. Okay, let's check it out. Hi, Joe. You made me some coffee? Yes. Yeah. All right. You're a it's gentleman, coffee man. from the guy from New Mexico. Oh, the state yeah. of New Mexico, eh? Hi, right, thanks a lot. Oh. Here it is. Coffee all the way from New Mexico. Hmm. Mm. Ah, good stuff. Oh, look at this. D. Carnick, I love you watching your videos. I look at in your, I hope you like that flag from low viewer Lucas. I mean, know what I like. What question are the new challenges with it? <laughs> wow, they're all good cars. I don't know, but I like the old cars. So let's see what we got here. And this is a flag of Delaware, right? Here it is. The flag of Delaware, the very first state of the US. So it is Joe and Lucas, thank you very much. Let's see what we got here. Charles from uh, Ohio. And look what he's got back here. For Kowalski Car Project. Attention, Nick. This is too much, man. This is too much. Ha! I knew it. Check this out, you guys. Vanishing point. <laughs> yep, that car is going to come to life this summer. Let me tell you, guys. Let me tell you. Playing with the camshaft there, right? Nice. To Nick from Charles Clark and Son Tristan in Cleveland, Ohio. Charles and Tristan, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I love it. And who do we got here? And this is from Sydney from Mississippi. Well, let's see what we got. Mississippi, no, never been there. Let's see what we got here. The official flag of Mississippi. Sydney, thank you very much. And what do we got here? A package from Mark from Baltimore. Oops. See what we got here, man. Oh my God, we got a. More coffee, <laughs> I believe. Baltimore coffee. We got some from Hawaii. We got some from the state of New Mexico. And now we got some from Baltimore. And of course, what do we got here? Wow, check it out. Volkswagen Beetle, 69 Mustang. And I believe this is what, 67, 68? Mark, thank you very much. And of course, we got a flag here. We don't have the flag of Maryland. So this is the flag of Maryland. I didn't know. Thank you, Mark. Here we go. This is from Steve from uh, the state of Kansas, U.S. of A. Okay, here it is. I'm sure there's a flag in the same box like the other ones. Oh, there it is. Wow, look at this. Speaking of charges, look what we got in the shop here. 69 charges from Topeka, Kansas. Nice. And of course, we got a flag here. Here it is. This is the second flag of Kansas. Of course, we're going to put it up with the other one. Thank you, Steve. From Penn State, Pennsylvania. Don't open with sharp objects. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I gotta be careful, eh? <laughs> okay, do not open okay, sharp object. Sharp okay, let me try something here. I'll try with a smaller razor blade. Let's see what happens. Don't don't worry. We'll be very careful. Wow, Marty, Marty. Okay, let's see what you got sent for Pennsylvania. Thank you very much for the uh, the flag of Pennsylvania. Two coffee mugs. You know. I'm getting coffee from one place, and I'm getting coffee mugs from another place. Not bad, eh? Here it is. The home of Groundhog. Huxatani, Pennsylvania. Oh, check this one out. Fill me up. Nice. Angelo, you want to make some more coffee? <laughs> Here it is. Marty, thank you very much. And this one is from... Wow, this is from Europe. Netherlands. Danny. I've kept every envelope. So if you go upstairs to my office, you take a look, you're gonna see every package from around the world that I've uh, saved. And check this out. <laughs> challenger in Netherlands, SRT 392. Got a nice challenger there. Danny, let's see what you sent us here. Wow, this is a big flag, eh? Danny, thank you very much. Here it is, red, white, and blue. And here's another package from Amazon. I hope they have a return name. Made in China. <laughs> in China. I got no letter, no name, no return address. I got a flag. Let's see where it's from in the first place. 
Yep, yeah, this is the state of Ohio. I'd like to thank you guys whoever sent it to me. So if you guys can send me an email, because I want to put your name on it before I hang it up. So please get in touch with us and thank you very much. Okay, this is from Mrs. Renee, Ontario. Yes, okay. This is a strange package. Let's open it up and see what we got. Wow. What do we got here? Oh, you gotta be kidding. Look at that. A shifter ball for a manual transmission for an SRT. Check it out. It's beautiful. Nice. And this is the Mopar. Check it out, man. We got shifting knobs for manual transmission on a Mopar car. So look at that. This is beautiful. DNA design, CNC milling. Here it is. Look at that. They make beautiful stuff for you guys. Nice chrome finish, solid, threaded, ready for installation. Nice design, you guys. Really nice. I've never seen this before. Nice and unique. And here we go. This is from. What Nick doesn't know yet, but is about to find out, is that this last package didn't come in the mail. His friends snuck it in with the other packages. They wanted to surprise him with something special. Reason is fun, you guys, Saturday afternoon. Everybody's watching me here opening up all these packages. If you guys knew behind the scene what's happening, there's a whole bunch of guys watching me doing this. On a Saturday afternoon, opening up the packages that we get during the week. Here we go. Let's see what we got now. Here we go. Wow, check this out. I've never seen this before. Let me check the letter. Here we go. Dear Nick, we wanted to drop in and uh, drop in a line and you know how much we love you on YouTube videos, especially the Kowalski Challenger. Here we go again. Yeah, you really deserve your dream car. Thank you. Wow, check this out. We've been your fans way before you made your first video. Here are a couple of things from the guys who knew what a great guy you are right from the start. Your biggest fans. Wow, check this out. Here it is. There it is, the Challenger. That our white Dodge Ram and the trailer to put it in. Now, I've never seen that one before. Oh, wait, there's more. There's more. Oh boy, let's check this out. Here it is. Oh my God. Look at that. It's from us, Nick. It's the real thing. No, wait a minute. Look behind. It's for your car. You gotta be kidding me. Look at this. Here it is. Oh my God. Look at this. Paul, oh, man, it's Mercedes. And this is us, all Al's idea. You gotta be kidding. Kept us all in the loop. Look at this. You gotta be kidding me. Al, oh, thanks a lot, you guys. Thanks a lot, man. And I never, I didn't, I didn't plan any plates yet, but this is the white plate for the car, right? This is a four-month project with your wife in it, too. Are you kidding me, man? Yeah. My wife knows about this, yeah. too? Your daughter knows about oh it. Oh, my God. Check it out. Everybody's put their name on it, eh? Unreal, man. Wow, oh, check this out, man. Kowalski. So, so, so now I got no choice but to put it up, eh? Well, it looks like it's going to go on the car. There's no question about it. You know, it's going to go on one car and only one car. And everybody knows which one that's going to be. Wow, personalized plate from the gang. Look at that. Of course, now I understand. Big fans before your first video. Oh, you guys grew up with me, of course. This is very, uh, this is something, man. This really gets to my heart, buddy. You guys, thanks a lot, all of you, man. Thanks a lot, you guys. Wow. Yep. This is something, boys. There it is. Of course, I have to give a special thanks to my wife that had to keep everything as a secret and have this mail to my house and without me seeing it. So you guys uh, and my wife, of course, all had to keep it as a secret and you guys all did a great job and uh, thank you all. So now all I have to do is register it. Okay. Let's get the car done, get it registered, and let's drive it. That's what I say. Let's take it for a ride. You guys, thanks a lot, you guys. Yeah, I got a lot of true friends, don't I? Yeah, look at this. And I wanna thank our Patreon supporters that uh, donate something every month to our channel to uh, support it, so we can keep going with it. And uh, we have a special video we put up for about four minutes, free video for everybody to watch on uh, patreons.com and uh, uh, slash Nick's Garage. Check it out. If you guys want to look at it, it's free for all for everyone that uh, watching us. It's a special thanks to all of you and thank you and I love you all. And if you guys have some time, just look down on the computer. You're going to see our merchandise. 
you guys like any of the stuff, buy it and you'll love it. Thank you.